How does a country go from being the murder capital of the world to being safer than the United States, Canada, Chile, and basically any country in all of the Western Hemisphere? The young, Bitcoin-friendly, tech-savvy president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele, will tell you how. In a recent interview with American political commentator Tucker Carlson, the self-dubbed coolest dictator in the world, Bukele made the sensational claim, we are safer than any other country in the Western Hemisphere. If I would have said that five years ago, they would have said that I was crazy, right? Because it was literally the most dangerous country in the whole world. To back this up, he provided good, hard data. Our country is safer than the United States as a whole. The U.S. murder rate is around six murders per 100,000 inhabitants, and our murder rate is two. So, we're safer than Canada. We're safer than Chile. Safer than Uruguay. Safer than the United States. Safer than any country in the Western Hemisphere. Let's take a deeper look into his claim. In February 2024, the Republic of El Salvador recorded zero homicides in the entire month. Yes, you heard that right. For a country that had witnessed 20 murders a day in 2015, this was remarkable. Even Canada, considered one of the safest countries in the world, witnessed 64 homicides in a single month in February 2024. Highlighting this achievement, President Bukele tweeted... With an annualized homicide rate of 0.8 per 100,000 inhabitants, less than half of Canada, and by far the safest country in the entire Western Hemisphere. So how did El Salvador go from being the world's homicide capital to safer even than Canada? To answer this question, let's go back in time. For decades, the Republic of El Salvador was notorious for violent crime. In the late 1990s, this small Central American nation was actually among the world's most violent countries, despite not being engaged in an active war. The most shocking data comes from 2015, when it recorded a homicide rate of 107 per 100,000 citizens, meaning one in every thousand people became a murder victim that year. The same year, El Salvador recorded an average of 20 murders every day. Fast forward to March 25, 2022, El Salvador recorded 87 murders within a span of just two days. Of these, a whopping 62 were committed in one day alone. The victims were chosen at random, in what was widely considered to be violent retaliation to the state seizing control of two bus routes that were previously under the control of gangs. These killings were ruthless, cruel, brutal. The victims who were innocent people just going about their day included a surfing instructor, a fruit seller, and a cobbler. One of the many bodies was found near Surf City, which had been developed by the president in his bid to increase tourism. Was it a threat? It sure seemed like a deadly one. But President Bukele was not one to be cowed down in the face of such terror. When confronted by the deadly challenge issued by the gangs, he decided to dial his crackdown up a notch. So, on the heels of El Salvador's bloody weekend came the president's announcement. A state of emergency was to be imposed across the nation. What did this mean? For starters, it meant that state machinery, like the police and army, now had sweeping powers to arrest suspected gang members without immediate charges. This gave the police more time to investigate the suspects for gang links, from going through their phones to hitting up their associates. Law enforcement officials no longer had to follow certain protocols before making an arrest. Without the need for a warrant, even an anonymous tip-off was enough to put a person behind bars. In the months to come, thousands of suspected gang members were rounded up and thrown in prison without access even to a lawyer. And to make it even more difficult for them to leave jail, the Bukele administration introduced the concept of a mass trial, a legally murky concept if there ever was one. Under this new system, as many as 900 suspected gang members could undergo trial at the same time, as long as they belonged to the same area or the same gang. Meanwhile, in towns and cities across El Salvador, the presence of heavily armed police and military personnel multiplied overnight. Suddenly, frisking at checkpoints could even mean stripping down to prove you had no gang tattoos on your body. Movement was severely restricted in gang-dominated neighborhoods. Anyone moving to and fro had to provide a valid reason and a valid identity card. 
And lest a gang decide to turn violent in protest, the police and army had been heavily armed with state-of-the-art weapons. This practice of intimidation and action jointly worked in the favor of El Salvador's deadly security forces, as they now carried out targeted raids to arrest gang leaders. Through such high-profile arrests, the forces managed to disrupt the leadership structure of deadly gangs like the Mara Salvatrucha or MS-13 and the 18th Street Gang. But we'll talk more about these ruthless organizations later. The state showed zero compassion towards gangsters who were incarcerated. Gang members were even locked up in their cells 24 7 with the president employing this inhumane practice to send a message of no mercy to the gangs. Because of your actions, now your homeboys will not see even one ray of sunlight. As the number of inmates rose by hundreds and thousands in prisons across El Salvador, the need for more rations arose. Instead of allocating further funds towards the upkeep of prisoners, President Bukele actually reduced the food for inmates to just two meals a day. His administration even seized the mattresses they slept on. And when international organizations raised an alarm over the alleged abuses, he famously tweeted, If the international community is worried about their little angels, they should come and bring them food because I am not going to take budget money away from schools to feed these terrorists. All this ill-treatment led to rumors of a retaliation, but President Bukele quashed this, again showcasing that he would go above and beyond to keep his country safe from gang violence. The president issued a harsh warning to the gangs, threatening to starve their members in prisons. There are rumors that they want to start taking revenge on random, honest people. If they do that, there won't even be one meal in prisons. I swear to God they won't eat a grain of rice, and let's see how long they last. They should stay calm and let themselves be arrested. At least on the inside, they will continue to live and have two meals a day. The Bukele government took a strict stance with the gangsters, transforming the landscape of justice into a nightmarish ordeal for those involved in gang activities. Convicted gang lords now faced prison sentences of up to 45 years. Earlier, they could be out of jail within a period of just six years. Meanwhile, lower gang members could now be jailed for 20 to 30 years, as opposed to the earlier and frankly laughable three to five. The Bukele administration also lowered the age for criminal responsibility for gang affiliation from 16 to 12 in an effort to prevent gangs from recruiting minors, who were previously seen as immune in the eyes of the law. The government's unyielding stance sent a chilling message. The era of leniency was long gone. Since the war on gangs, the government of El Salvador has arrested 77,000 suspected gang members, more than 1% of its entire population. How did the government achieve this? The siege of Soyapango is one such example. Eradicating the Mara Salvatrucha, MS-13, and 18th Street Gang Two powerful rival camps accused of drug trafficking, extortion, murder, rape, and prostitution was the target of the offensive. For years, the gangs had brutally murdered civilians, forced women and girls into prostitution rings, extorted money from legally run businesses, and even raped its own female members as part of initiation rituals. Yes, I said that right. Male gang members often raped the women who wanted to join them. This ritual, called trencito, or little train, required the woman to have sex with multiple male members in order to prove her loyalty. It was time for the Bukele government to put a stop to this. Soyapango, a municipality in San Salvador, was a stronghold of the MS-13 and 18th Street Gang. In December 2022, the Bukele administration finally moved to change the status quo. The president tweeted that 10,000 soldiers had surrounded the city and were ready to remove gangsters one by one. This is believed to have been the largest deployment of troops in the history of the country. No small feat when the country was embroiled in a brutal civil war until the late 20th century. In the days to come, the troops went from house to house and detained hundreds of suspected gang members in their quest to make the city safer. No gang member was allowed to leave Soyapango. The troops surrounding the city made sure of that. In the two years since El Salvador launched the state of emergency, the country has apprehended thousands of gang members. 
With mass arrests leading to crowded prisons, the Bukele administration has even opened a new maximum security prison named the Terrorism Confinement Center, which has the capacity to hold 40,000 prisoners. A chilling video, shared by the president himself, shows hundreds of inmates being forced to move around with their hands handcuffed behind their backs. They are bare-chested, clad only in white shorts, and can be seen running, terror writ on their faces. What do the people of El Salvador feel about Bukele's measures? Naib Bukele is a cool guy. No, really. In addition to nicknaming himself the world's coolest dictator, he also calls himself the world's coolest president and the CEO of El Salvador. He took office as El Salvador's youngest president in 2019, and it's pretty clear from his body language that he is witty, confident, and sure of his methods. And why wouldn't he be when he enjoys such high approval ratings? His support base credits him for the fall in crime. His war on gangs has seen copycats in other Latin American countries. Inspired by Bukele's stance on gang violence, Honduras had launched a war on extortion and imposed a state of emergency in gang strongholds last year. Bukele's no-nonsense, no-mercy method even has fans in Peru, Costa Rica, Guatemala, and Honduras. In fact, the people of Honduras and Guatemala have held marches in support of his methods and demanded their governments take similar decisive action. Closer home, Bukele's popularity is unwavering. He was elected as the president for the first time in 2019, when he garnered 53% of the votes. His vote share increased to a whopping 85% during El Salvador's presidential elections in February 2024, signaling a growing and unwavering popularity among his subjects. His tough stance on crime and gang violence has touched the lives of the common citizens of his country. Local businesses report that they no longer have to pay extortion fees and people can now move around without fear of violence. But while there have been great strides in safety, human rights organizations have highlighted alleged abuses within prisons. Reports of torturing prisoners, forcing them to live in cramped spaces, without adequate toilet facilities or even clean drinking water, have surfaced on the Internet. There have also been accusations of mass arrests to fulfill state-given quotas, as well as violent deaths in the hands of state machinery. The president, however, does not take these accusations seriously. With the kind of popularity he enjoys, he does not need to. The common citizens of El Salvador are just thankful that they no longer fear for their lives every time they step out the door.